Hello everybody, welcome back to the Spoked Wheel YouTube channel. Today we're back with episode 4 of the Andy Schleck Pro Cyclist Mode playthrough. Um, it's another big day for us today. Last time out we ended off with stage 1 of our first objective of the season. And kind of on the fly we changed our plans a little bit. Initially coming in I thought that maybe this could be a race that we could target the GC on. Uh, we were a little surprised to see just how many good World Tour teams were present at the event, and as a result, switched our focus to uh, the King of the Mountains competition. And it went extremely successfully in Stage 1. Uh, we didn't quite win every single categorized climb, but I think we won all but one and finished second in the final one. Um, so we're in the lead of that competition. We have a nice little buffer. And at the end of the last video, we determined basically that if we can secure a lead of greater than 20 points in stage two, the competition is wrapped up and we will indeed win the jersey. So that's going to be the focus of today's video. I'm going to play stage two and stage three. And our intentions are going to be to win that KOM jersey and get our first, uh, first distinctive jersey of the career. Um, so we're just gonna go ahead and get right into it. The other thing is I would expect us to reach level three in this video, whether through uh, racing results or just <clears throat> the month switching over from February to March. Um, so that will be good. We'll get another opportunity to upgrade our stats or maybe even think about upgrading stage racing potential. But yeah, like I said, let's just get straight into the racing. All right, so we're into stage two of the Tour de Alpes Maritime at Duvar. And luckily our team has the same thought in mind as us. <clears throat> so they want us to go in the breakaway at the start of the race and hold on as long as possible, which is exactly what we need to do anyways to try and get the KOM points um, to secure the jersey. So I think basically today's stage will be focusing on these first four categorized climbs, the two cat threes and then followed by two cat twos. Uh, it's a pretty long stage today, up over 200 kilometers, so I wouldn't anticipate the breakaway lasting until this final cat two climb. So I'm hoping that if we can get as many points as possible through these first four, that will be enough to get the lead we need to take into tomorrow's stage. Um, and an added benefit of already starting in the KOM jersey uh, is that we start right at the front of the peloton. So we're in a good spot to uh, kick things off and attack and get into the breakaway. Um, I like the red jersey, it's a nice look, I would say. Uh, and hopefully we can do it justice and defend it well. So far no one else is going into the breakaway with us, which on the one hand, if no one else, alright, there we go, I was going to say, if no one else attacks, we wouldn't have to compete with anyone for the points, but it would be a lot harder to actually get an advantage and stay away long enough to get as many points as we need. So it looks like we have a teammate in both the second and third group on the road, which also could end up being very helpful. Let's check on the gap back to the peloton. Up over a minute, so yeah, things are going, going well. It looks like this sort of group of 11, I guess it will be, once it's all together. Uh, looks like the breakaway is going to work, and we have two teammates. Um, so that helps not just to drive the pace and make sure we get an advantage, but also potentially they could soak up points and take second or third away from other riders in the break, which would benefit our uh, hunt for the KOM points for sure. Um, so now that the breakaway is set and everything's all together, I'm going to jump up ahead to 
that first KOM point and get into the action. Alrighty, so we're within five kilometers to the summit of this first climb. Uh, we do have one teammate who's actually working to protect us in this group. Um, and we're gonna, we're just gonna move up here to the front and try and make sure we're in a good spot to take the points. I'm gonna put it on infinite relay so that I stay on the front. There we go. Mammakin kicks off the attacking. It's a bit of a downhill finish, almost. Alright, so it's not enough to take the full points, but we did grab a couple of points there. Um, that was kind of a finish that didn't exactly play to our strengths, I would say. It was a little flatter than I would have liked, so hopefully... Um, Hopefully that's a one-off and not a, an indication of things to come. Um, the next couple of climbs look like they finish more uphill, proper mountain sprints. Um, so if that is the case, I'm hoping we'll have some more success. But still, better to get some points than no points, certainly. We are now coming up on our second ascension of the Côte de Tortor, um, inside of five kilometers to go. I'm going to try the same strategy, using my teammate to be on the front and to reduce the amount of distance that I actually have to cover once the attacks start. And like I said, this one actually finishes with a lot steeper of a gradient, so I'm hoping that will play into our hands as a climber and allow us to get the maximum points this time around. Let's see who kicks off attacks this time around. There we go. Very early outside of a kilometer and we were all over it because we had good positioning at the front. Let's make our move. Well, our teammate. Oh, I thought he was going to take it from us. Perfect. Okay. That's more like it. Maximum points takes us up to 34 for two stages so far. Um, very happy with that. Of course, the two cat two climbs still to come uh, give us the potential to grab an additional 20 points. Our lead over the Peloton is still looking really solid around four and a half minutes with 126 kilometers to go. Um, so you never know. The, the possibility of perhaps even lasting to that last Cat 2 climb could be there for sure. But uh, so far so good, I would say. We are now at just about six kilometers from the summit of our first time up the Col de Lagrange. Um, like I said, 10 points on offer for the leader over this climb, and it's our job to make sure that that is us this time around. Last time our teammates actually did a really good job with one sort of leading us out and one sitting right behind us on our wheel. Uh, that made things a lot easier, I would say, and worked to our advantage. We'll see whether or not they're gonna do that same thing again. It looks like they might. The lucky thing is that Daniel Oss, who is second in this competition, isn't even in the breakaway, so our advantage was even larger. We got Marcus Burghardt, his teammate, who's going for the KOM points, but I'm pretty sure he started the day with zero points, so that just plays into our hands for sure. One kilometer from the summit. bit early there. I, th I think we ended up getting uh, the maximum 10 points anyways, but that was a little bit lucky. Um, if the road hadn't been so narrow and bended like that, um, we 
might have missed that. So we got to be careful to time things a little bit better next time around. But until then, uh, another success. We're now on, I think, 44 points. Uh, I forgot to check who who was in second place and how many points they had, but I think at this rate we are more or less uh, securing the jersey regardless of what happens tomorrow, which is exactly what we hope for, so it's going well. We are now on the slopes of the Col de la Grange once again. Um, the pace in the breakaway has really picked up quite significantly. The gap to the peloton has come down a lot. It's down around two and a half minutes, so they've eaten two minutes into our advantage, basically. Um, and yeah, Berhane, Berghardt, and guys like that are really riding hard at the front of the breakaway um, to try and keep things alive, which is doing a decent amount of damage on the energy that I have available. Hopefully we can still grab a few points uh, up over the top of this climb, uh, but I would guess that, kind of like I speculated at the start, um, that final Cat 2 climb is not gonna, not gonna present itself as an opportunity. I don't think the breakaway will last that much longer. Inside of two kilometers, so I would expect the attacks to kick off here. There we go, Anto Marchi goes from the front. I'm gonna run out of energy. Well, that is highly unfortunate. We might still be able to grab a few points, but no, nah, it doesn't look like it. Luckily, we still have a significant lead. Um, Valentin Ferran is in second with 25 points, so uh, we have a 19-point lead on him, which isn't quite that uh, that 20-point buffer I was talking about at the start of this. Um, so we're going to have to be on our guard going forward and see how the math works out. But it looks like we're more or less done from the breakaway unless they're going to wait for us three to rejoin. That's one of the dangers of kind of early early on in your pro cyclist career. A 200 kilometer stage with 58 stamina, 59 resistance. It's not a recipe for success, let's put it that way. Uh, so that's definitely something we're going to be looking to improve as the career goes on, but I'm hoping that we still with the limited energy that we're working with, I'm hoping we've still done enough to hopefully win this jersey because that would be a big, big step forward. I think we would get a lot of XP for it, which would obviously help with improving uh, in the long run. So we're only, we're less than a minute ahead of the Peloton right now. I would expect that to continue to come down pretty quickly. So. I don't think we have a whole lot longer left in this, this breakaway outing. So we were caught by the peloton with about 55 kilometers to go. We're now at 22 kilometers to go, eight kilometers out from our final Cat 2 climb of the day. The fact that we were caught so early gave us a little bit of time to rest up and regenerate energy. Uh, the remnants of the breakaway are still out in front, 30 seconds ahead of the peloton. Uh, which has actually been diminished quite a lot down to just 60 riders. So we're gonna we're gonna try and grab some points over this climb. I think it's not super likely that it will work, uh, just because we're already low on energy. The competition is stiffer, and there's still guys out in front from the breakaway. But we'll see. Things might have gone a little bit differently if. We were still on our fitness peak and we had a better race day condition, but unfortunately that wasn't the case. Yeah, I just don't think we have the energy to go with a lot of this. So, unfortunately not going to happen. This is a very 
very narrow road on this climb, which also makes it difficult. We sort of got swamped and missed out, but that's okay. Um, we keep our 19-point advantage over Ferran Roglic up into third now. Um, so, yeah, I think we're in a good position to to uh, take the jersey tomorrow, to win the jersey, um, but it's not, not set in stone. So, tomorrow's going to be a big day. I think probably not going to go in the breakaway. If I recall correctly, it was the categorized climbs came quite late into the race. I don't think that would serve much of a purpose, but we're going to try and be on the lookout for opportunities to pick up as many points as we can. Um, and we'll see, we'll see. Uh, even wearing the jersey for two days is a decent, uh, I think it's a decent performance at our first objective in our first professional season. Um, yeah, we're, we're losing more time here. That's not really, I'm not concerned about that. We lost time in stage one too, so we're not in contention for a decent GC result at all. Um, we're just gonna ride this one out so uh, be on the podium for a second straight day, I guess. I'm curious just to see who's going to win this stage. Michael Matthews won stage one. This seems like it would be another stage that would be quite good for him. Uh, so we'll see. Michael Woods takes it today. Ahead of Pino, Roglic, Diego Rosa, and then Mark Hirschi. Michael Matthews was down in eighth. Looked like there was somewhat of a time gap there, so we'll see whether or not he kept his lead. But 33rd for Andy Schleck. Decent result, I would say, again, considering the amount of points that we also picked up. I don't think my mic was recording, but uh, yeah, there we go. Um, we keep the jersey. I was just saying that looking at the start list at the start of this race, Woods, Pino, Hirschi, uh, all you would have expected them to be up there, so it's no surprise that they are up there in the top four. Um, I think I'm... Oh, Roglic, too, of course. Yeah, Roglic. That probably would have been my guess for the top four at the start of the race, so uh, not a surprise that that's where they are. We will see whether or not that holds true after the, the final stage tomorrow. We didn't quite hit our breakaway objective. Just got 128 out of 140. Still gave us a very good evaluation, and they are happy that we kept the lead in the climbers classification. So that's good. We got a further seven points, taking us to within 13 from our next level. Um, yeah, so let's let's uh, go ahead and play through the last stage, and hopefully we can win the jersey. Okay, so we are now into the final stage um, of our first objective of the season, and for the third third time in three days, our team wants us to get into the breakaway. This time I'm actually not going to do that. Um, I don't think uh, being in the breakaway will really accomplish anything in this stage. The categorized climbs are so far into the race that I can't imagine the breakaway will be will still be out in front at that point. I also don't 
really think that the KOM points are even going to be up for grabs for a rider like Andy Schleck. I think that they're going to go almost completely to the GC contenders, which, if that happens, uh, we have over a 30-point lead on Roglic, so we should be safe. Um, so I'm basically just going to ride this stage not for the GC, but kind of as like a a GC test for myself to see how we compare at this point to some of the top guys. Um, so sorry, sorry to my director sportif who wants me to get in the breakaway, but I'm going to leave that to my teammates this time and stay in the peloton and try and save energy. Um, so we got a, a lot of a lot of flat ground with a couple of sprint points. I'm probably going to jump ahead to some point up around here where the climbing begins and then we'll play all the way through to the finish and with the objectives of first and foremost trying to defend the KOM jersey but then also seeing how we fare against guys participating in the GC battle. Um, so yeah, let's, uh, let's jump ahead and we'll see how it goes. Okay, so we have jumped ahead over 100 kilometers into this race. Uh, quick race situation, we have four teammates up in the breakaway, which is about a minute 20 ahead of the peloton. Uh, we are in the peloton, which has been reduced down to 91 riders. It was raining pretty hard at one point, that seems to have stopped, luckily. And we are just now getting into this Cat 2 climb uh, that leads up to the finish. Caldu Corpse de Guard. And things are getting pretty serious. So, already it's relatively clear that I'm not going to be able to hold my own against uh, some of the riders in this field on these short, kind of all out accelerations that the hill rating is for. Um, you might be able to fare better if it was a longer, steadier climb. So, the likelihood of getting points at all on this climb, probably not very good. Um, so I'm just gonna have to hope that uh, Ferran, I believe, was the rider who, who was closest to me. I might be, that might be wrong, but I think that's what his name was. Um, so hopefully he doesn't get any points and no one else is within touching distance, basically. So inside a kilometer to go, the breakaway, actually is going to take these points, so what I said at the beginning of the stage was wrong. There we go, yeah, we preserved our advantage over Valentin Front. so with that, I believe there's only 10 more points on offer, so we have, assuming that we don't crash out and get injured, um, mathematically we've basically secured the KLM jersey, which is great. Um, I'm glad that we were able to achieve that goal. And this final climb, it's a steep one. It's kind of more of a, a punchy one still than riding your own tempo. And we've also been dropped here, so my my plan to test myself and try and get a good DC time and good place on the stage also not. Um, that was a bit of a, a bit of a chaotic cat two on there. And I was not quite prepared, I would say. Um, but that's okay. I'm just gonna ride, ride at about 88 effort, I guess. And try and just get up this climb as quick as I can. There should be a pretty exciting battle, actually, between. Roglic and Woods and Pino and those guys to see who wins this race. It's really steep. Over 15% rating here in the three kilometers. It's 
like that group of five favorites are more or less battling it out like we thought would happen. Like Matthew's out of contention. This one's just a bit too tough for him. Inside of the block we're going out. Three miles Roglic wins the stage ahead of Tebow Pino. Dan Martin, Mark Woods, Mark Hirschi. Round out the top five. Andy Schleck has run out of energy. Still be a decent finish, I think. Probably get a top 30 place on this stage. I think we were in 37th on GC or something like that. 25th, okay, so maybe we'll move up a little bit. We'll have to wait and see. Um, we'll take a look at the finish and see how drug which one, and then we'll take a look at the podium, which, unless I've completely misjudged something, should have us as the king of the mountains. sprint against Pino. In real life there's absolutely no one better at that sprint finish after the end of the climb. Roglic has demonstrated that pretty consistency, consistently, especially last season. So Roglic wins the stage and it's enough for him to move into the overall lead. So he takes the overall race two seconds ahead of Thibaut Pino. Michael Woods in third. And there you have it. Andy Schleck wins the King of the Mountains jersey, uh, an early sign of the climbing promise that is yet to come from Andy, I think. In the end, it really wasn't too much of a challenge. We were able to use that lead that we built on the first stage. Um, I think we had enough points after the first stage that we would have won regardless of what happened. So that's good. Michael Woods takes the points classification, a little consolation prize for him losing the jersey, and Mark Hirschi takes the Best Young Riders competition. In the end, we were ninth in that, um, so that's pretty solid as well, considering we lost a decent amount of time on stages one and two after being in the breakaway. And now we'll just have to see what our team thinks of our performance. I'm, personally, I'm happy. Um, yeah, they were happy too. They liked the, the distinctive jersey, and plus that was our first stage race finish, so we get a lot of points for that, enough to take us up into level 3. We also didn't like that we didn't go in the breakaway, but I think we made up for it by winning the KOM competition. Got an additional 17 points there. Um, yeah, so we get to to choose between a skill point, or we get our skill point and then we choose between improvement of attributes or potential. So let's see, if we picked climber again, we would get the mountain rating up to 74 with a 73 hill rating. That's actually very solid and right off the bat, that is appealing. Um, give a nice little increase to some of our secondary stats too. Let's compare it to what we would get for stage racing. Would our time trial be the same? It would, okay. So, not a ton there in stage racing that climbing doesn't give us. No difference in recovery or anything like that. Puncher would just give us one less mountain and one more flat rating. So I think it's gonna be, it's gonna have to be climber. Uh, this is a decent upgrade, so I ideally I wanna upgrade my potential, my stage racing potential still. I haven't forgotten about that, but I want to do it um, on a level up where the progression of attributes that are offered to us uh, isn't that good. Um, so this is a good one, so I'm going to take advantage of it and use it. That 74 mountain rating and 73 hills is should enable us to get some pretty decent results um, in the next little while. That's, that's a pretty solid level for a continental rider. So I'm happy with that. Yep, let's confirm. And then we'll go into our skill points. Like I said, I'm just gonna keep going with attentiveness. 
the benefit that you get for, from gaining more XP each month, I think, makes it worth it to start off by maxing this out. Um, yeah, so that is that for today's episode, I think. Uh, I think it's going to be a little bit shorter. Um, I'm hoping it was. Let's just simulate ahead a day to make sure that our attributes um, get updated. But yeah, I would say all in all, a pretty successful, successful episode. Uh, we didn't quite have as much success in winning the KOM sprints as we did in stage one, but we still did well enough to to win the jersey. Um, and that improvement to our attributes is was quite a important one. So I'm all around pretty happy with it. Um, Looking ahead, uh, not a ton of races that really suit us in March. Um, in fact, I would say all four of those races are ones where there won't be a lot of action. Um, but then moving a little bit further ahead, we start to get into races that are a little bit more intriguing. Of course, the Circuit de Ardennes Internationale was the race that I mentioned earlier on, that was actually Andy Schleck's first professional race, I believe, so that will be fun, a fun one to do to compare our Andy Schleck's results to Andy Schleck's results in real life. Um, I might I might get rid of uh, the Tour de Bretagne, yeah. It's just a bunch of very flat stages. Uh, so no, nothing really there for us. Um, and then it's not really until later in the season that we get into our, our big climbing races like Von 2. Uh, so that will be exciting once we get there. Hopefully we'll be able to, the Tour de la Avenir as well, of course, hopefully we'll be able to continue to upgrade our stats and uh, get to a good level by then so that we can be competing for those victories. Um, in turn, yeah, I'll be... I'll keep on doing this series, keep going with episodes in this series. I have a couple other ideas for additional Pro Cycling Manager videos. The first one of those probably should be out um, at some point in the next week or two, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, I'm hoping that will be a fun way to, to uh, break things up a little bit so I'm not just posting this career mode. Um, yeah, and in terms of the, the real-life cycling world, we got the GP uh, La Marseillaise over the weekend. I'm probably saying that name wrong, so apologies for that, but that it's a French race. Um, kind of a lot of, people, a lot of people consider it this year to be sort of the start of the racing season, um, so we're sort of officially underway. The World Tour season gets underway with the UAE tour later in February. So things are kicking off there. That's going to be exciting. I might might potentially do some videos about what's going on in the real world at some point. We'll see. But yeah, until then, um, like I said, going to keep going with the Andy Schleck playthrough. Uh, have a couple other, other video ideas that should be out soon. So as always, if you like the video, make sure that you subscribe to the channel to stay up to date when new stuff comes out. Um, I appreciate you all for watching and tuning in. Um, until next time, I will see you later.